I'm told that we've got Jim Rogers good on our camera in Singapore, so I'd love to just draw him in to the conversation we've been having. Jim, good to catch up with you. Jim, of course, chairman of Rogers Holdings with us out of Singapore this morning. Jim, just keep us in touch with what you're doing in your own investments at the moment. Where, where are you positioned? Well, Jeff, I'm as confused as anybody else um, with what's going on. As usual, I basically am short stocks and long commodities and trying to figure out whether to add to the euro or not right now. Uh, and that's interesting. You, you think the euro is poised for a turn here? Well, I, I'm not sure, but I, and I haven't bought it yet, but I may buy it after this program for all I know. Uh, yes, everybody's terribly negative on the euro right now. It's unbelievable how many bears there are all of a sudden. So that usually means there's a rally coming, if only temporarily. Do you think that's a, a, a rally on the fact that it's just oversold technically, Jim, or the fundamental value is right at around these levels? Well, there is fundamental value at these levels. That does not mean it cannot go to a dollar later on. No, no, I, basically it's a, a technical rally. Now, once the technical rally starts, it could turn into more than that. Who knows? It could turn into a, a major bull market. You have to start somewhere. But I, my thought is that I should probably be buying the euro. But again, Jeff, only because everybody, I cannot find anybody who is bullish on the euro. And that's usually a sign to move into the euro and there was or, me, or anything. And there was me, Jim, thinking that it, it was the confidence you have with the way that the European authorities variously are handling the eurozone debt crisis. <laughs> Oh, Jeff, you're bad for my nervous system when you say something like that. And you, you know I don't have any confidence in what's going on. I'm stunned at what Merkel did uh, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, when she said, OK, we're going to give up on the currency. We don't care if it's a strong currency. We will bail out people who, who spend money they don't have. No, I was stunned at that. I couldn't believe the Germans would ever, in, in my lifetime, do something like that. Well... Uh, Jim, I'm curious to know what advice you would give the large pension plans who are facing enormous unfunded liabilities. Historically, uh, they've been big investors in private equity, but have been burned by many of the more volatile asset classes and have pulled back. But yet they face significant long-term funding gaps. They're going to have to take risk in order to achieve the reward to meet their obligations. What would you suggest to them and where do you think they will go? Well, the only big bull market I see in the next decade continues to be commodities. I suspect what's going to happen before too much longer. Governments are going to start printing money again. Well, let me put it this way. Economies are not going to be as strong as the government's hope and the central bank's hope. Stock markets will not be good for a while. And then central banks will start printing money again because that's all they know to do. They don't have any better sense than that. And once they start printing money in a huge way, it leads to more inflation and then ultimately even worse inflation. And the only way to protect yourself that on a long-term basis is through real assets, whether that's cotton or silver or natural gas, whatever it happens to be. It will not be the stock market. So, Jim, would you see levered plays into the commodity space through hedge funds and other products? Or would you see simply owning the hard assets as close to the assets as you can be to protect wealth? Well, it depends on how much you know about commodities. If you cannot spell commodities, I wouldn't suggest you buy any, any commodity. But if you know a whole lot about them, of course, leverage is phenomenal. Leverage will make you extremely rich very quickly if you know what you're doing. But please, you better know what you're doing if you start using a lot of leverage. You can get enormous leverage in the, in the commodity business, as you know. But you can also go bankrupt in an afternoon if you don't know what you're doing. Uh, Jim, a couple of viewer questions, uh, both pointing to the to the same subject. Uh, one of them uh, quoting you, I believe, saying that the pound is finished and wanting to get a follow-up analysis on that one. And another saying, where do you see the pound by the end of this year? One viewer pointing out it's actually been up compared to the euro since the beginning of uh, 2009. So where do you stand on sterling? Well, I, I continue to... I do not own the pound, let's put it this way. I do not, I have no long positions and no short positions. I have no positions at all. As you know, the British balance of trade continues to be a disaster. The British debt continues to go up disastrously. The North Sea continues to decline. Uh, the North City of London continues to decline. I don't see any reason to own the pound sterling at all. Not for a long, long, long time. Not until it's much, much lower, which I expect it to be. But I don't have a position. I'm, this is just an observation. 
Um, what do you think about emerging markets? Um, Tom is writing in from Germany, wants to know which emerging markets you're looking at at the moment, Jim. Well, I have been selling short emerging markets. My shorts right now are technology in the U.S. and emerging markets. And I've been shorting emerging markets and, and technology because those are the things that went up the most uh, in the last year or so. That's where, I'm, And I'm short one major uh, Western financial institution. I've been shorting emerging markets. I, if some collapse, I hope I'm smart enough to buy some of them because I suspect there'll be great growth there in the future, especially when governments start printing money and people start putting their money into real assets. We, um, we'd love to get a view from you, I think, on this uh, BP story, perhaps just in the way you think it's going to affect oil prices. Uh, I mean, clearly President Obama um, is talking very tough with the company right now. I'm not sure whether they really should be off 50% in terms of market cap, but what's your take on this? Are you buying BP? What do you think of oil prices as a result of the story? I'm not buying BP. I have it on my radar screen. Obviously, whenever there's some kind of disaster like this for a company, somewhere along the line, you have to step in and buy it because eventually this too will pass. Uh, as far as oil prices, needless to say, this just makes the long-term outlook for oil that much better because there's going to be, there are going to be more restrictions on drilling for oil in the U.S. and perhaps in other countries. And with less drilling or more restricted drilling, that's less oil. And less oil means higher prices. What, what price does BP have to get to, Jim, before you'd venture in? I, I wouldn't judge it on, on price, uh, Jeff. I would judge it on time somewhere along the line as people start forgetting this and it gets out of the headlines that's more likely to be the time to buy rather than price. Jim, Jim I've heard you on a number of occasions uh, make reference to a, a large Western financial institution that you are going aggressively short against. Um, can you name it? Well, I'd rather not, uh, Jeff, because I have too many friends that work there. I have too many friends that work in many places, and they always get agitated when I short their stocks. What? Uh, they're, they're, there are not many major Western financial institutions left. Well, so well, you can Jim, probably figure out. Just, just help me nail it down. I mean, which continent is it in? Is, are we talking about a European, an American, or maybe even a British institution here? Well, the headquarters are in North America. Let's, let's leave it at that. Okay. Let me ask you then as a follow-up more broadly. Um, are you shorting other banks at this stage? Do you think that they still remain the reservoirs of risk? I, I, there are huge risks left in the banking system, in the financial system. I'm not shorting them, uh, mainly because the, most of them just did not go up as much. I mean, Citibank is up to $3. That's not, not worth my while to short Citibank. As you know, I was short Citibank in 2007 and 2008, but a big rally to 3 is not enough for me to sell it short. Uh, some of these banks are just still very depressed. The UBS is very, very depressed on a historic basis, so I'm not shorting any of them. Uh, Jim, are you uh, watching with interest what's developing on Capitol Hill in relation to the banking sector then? It looks as if we're going to hear more this week about the details and how they get together these two versions of the financial regulation bill. Uh, what implications is it having for you, do you think? Well, part of what's happening in the world is we're in a major shift away from finance into producers of real goods, and this is just going to be another nail in the coffin, which makes it less and less attractive to go to the city of London or to Wall Street. I, I have no idea which version is going to come out. It really doesn't matter. Either way, it's going to be less and less attractive. You know, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, Wall Street and the city of London were backwaters. Nobody went there except the idiot son. That's why, that's why I went in, in those days. And now we're having a shift away. The financial markets are not as attractive for the last 10 years. Governments are going to make things worse. You should become a farmer. You should go into the producer, become a miner. Go into the producers of real goods. That's who's going to be important and powerful in the next decade or two. Uh, Jim, let me ask you about timing here. You know, um, people are concerned, I think, about a slowdown in China. You've, you yourself have said you're shorting some of those emerging markets. The developing world is, what, 45 percent exposed in terms of uh, its, um, uh, the total economy, in effect, and it's gearing to the export market, to the developed world. If we see a double dip next year, uh, which I think you've talked about, does that mean that we see China slow down and the commodity story itself a lot weaker for next year? 
Well, the Chinese government has been quite open that they're trying to cool things off in China. They've raised interest rates. They've raised reserve requirements. They're putting on big restrictions in real estate. They know they have a bubble in coastal urban real estate. They're rightly trying to slow it down. Uh, but it's more important than what China's doing, Jeff, depends. It's the U.S. and Europe. The U.S. and Europe are 10 times the size of the Chinese economy. And if we slow down, the West slows down, that's going to affect everybody, including China. Now, as for commodities, as I said earlier in the show, what I suspect will happen that as the world economies slow down again, governments are then going to print money. And when throughout history, when you've printed money, it has always gone into real assets. Now, I don't, I'm not an advocate of printing money. I think it's a horrible, horrible thing to do. But that's all these guys know. That's all they know what to do when things are bad. They print money. So I'd rather be short stocks and long commodities in that kind of environment over the next few years. So, Jim, we've had uh, emails asking if you'd buy mining stocks, particularly Australian mining stocks, as a proxy to the commodity trade. I'm guessing, though, no, if you don't like equities at all. Well, I, I, I'm not long. Well, I, I actually own some Australian mining shares, but I've owned them for about 10, 10 or 12 years. So, but I'm not buying them now, in other words. Uh, I know I'd rather buy the commodities themselves because in the, the kind of environment which may come up, Politicians are going to attack everybody, uh, especially financial markets, and it's better to own the real stuff, especially if they're printing money. And unless you're very, very good at stock picking, you should own the commodities themselves. Always a pleasure catching up with you, Jim. Thanks so much for that. Jim Rogers, chairman of Rogers Holdings.